Today I'm Isaiah Taylor from Greensboro, North Carolina, a junior business information technology student here at North Carolina NT State University, and I currently serve as Cold Steel Captain. Good morning, everybody. It's Isaiah Taylor, September 29th, uh, 8.30. To start with good morning. I ain't really a morning person. But good morning. Pretty much welcome to my day in the life. I'm going to take you on my journey for the day, so... First, we got an appointment at 9, and we got a class at 12.30, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready for the appointment. We're going to come back home and get ready for the class. Let's go do it. Why did you choose North Carolina a &T? Okay, so the exact reason why everybody tells you not to choose a school is exactly why I chose a school. I chose a school because I love the band. I've always been a band head, like, and I knew that I can go anywhere to get a degree kind of what I wanted to do, but I was more of a guy about experience, like the experience that I would get from college and that I was looking forward to. Like I grew up really down the street and when I was all throughout high school, I always heard auntie playing. Like I would go outside and like play the cadences with them when they was playing them at nighttime, you know, just at the house. So, and my grandfather also was an Aggie, you know, so it was just big for me to kind of come here because this is exactly what I wanted to do. You know, I tried to look at other schools, but they never held my interest for long. It was just a, a phase of time. a t was like my life in a way. You see what I'm saying? Something I was trying to live by and go see for myself. One thing I will say, I've been living in North Carolina my whole life. Still not used to this weather. Still can't stay. Waking up in the morning, it get colder than it was all week. But it's all good. I'm about to go in here to the dinner. We gotta do start the day off good. See y'all in the future. So growing up here in Greensboro, and I've you know I've known you for for a while, seen you and you was like inch eye private eye. Like, so how has it been navigating Greensboro and the drum community here? I would say Greensboro's drum community is very it's, it's not very large, you know. So once you kind of get into it, you're very much into it. Um, the part I would say that. I've been able to pretty much navigate through the most is just going through like different high schools and making those connections. Like I know people from Grimsley, I know people from Page, I know people from even High Point, you know, other cities and stuff around North Carolina. And I would say that for me, it just helped me pretty much grow as a musician, you know, making those connections because it's not such a big community. Like I learned a lot of skills from people at Grimsley, you know, like how to do this, how to write and, you know, this, that and the third. So. I would say being from here, I've tried to also be more of an inspiration to the people that are here, you know, because I feel like there's not a lot of people here that make it out doing, you know what I'm saying, just playing drums or just get to go to that higher level of playing drums. It's not a lot of people from Greensboro even in the band, really. Mm -hmm. So compared to the amount of people that I know play instruments and stuff like that. So I just really try to uphold that tradition and keep everything going, per se. Are you doing good peoples? So right now it's about 1040. So I'm just now leaving the dentist. Um, now we're probably about to go ahead and go head back to campus or near campus and get dressed for class at 1230. Chill out for a little bit. And then, yeah, we'll be ready for class. So I'll see y'all then. So you're also a, a creative designer. You have have a business where you, you know, do fashion and designs and shirts. How do you balance school, band, organizations, and your business? What's good, everybody? It's 11.10, checking in. Uh, I got some time in between my class. Well, I got some time in between my class and, you know what I'm saying, we get home, so right now I'm actually about to make a few hoodies. I'm gonna show you all the full process, but I'm about to make a few clothes still hoodies. So. With some customers, current members. So this is pretty much what I do on my off time. Besides playing drums, people always ask me what do I do. Like outside of playing drums, I'm just a person who creates like all day. Whether that be music or hoodies or logos, anything. I just love to create, love to produce a result, you know. It's all about the results you're producing. Uh, so as of right now, my order is 
Dr. Ruff loves this one. Band, school, and everything else for section leaders. You know, it, that's just the rule, but that's understood when you, when you become a section leader. So right now, for me, now that we're coming into the slower part of our season, now that Jiho's about to approach, that's going to be busy. But after that, we're slowing down. I always approach things with, hey, I got to make sure the band stuff is done first. Like, whatever times have to be sent out, X, Y, Z, cadences, work, whatever is done. Schoolwork is done. And then I'll do hoodies or, like, shirts or just come up with designs or whatever throughout the day or whenever I have my time. During the fall, it's never really my time to be, like, super, super business, business oriented until it's around Jiho time. Mm. But then during the springtime is really when I get my freedom to do that. Just because I... I'm not one of those types of guys that try to give half my effort into things. You know, I always try to just say, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. But if I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. So right now for me is, band. I have to do it. I need to do it. I want to do it. And I just try to give them my all right now because I feel like the section needs it. And I, I can honestly say that I can see the improvement from last year's drumline to this year's drumline because of some of the things that we have changed to put in place. So for me, it's just a... I always say this word, time management. I cannot express that enough. Like, it takes late nights and early days in order for you to be the successful man that you want to be. And that's something that I truly live by. I'm always, I try to be up early and I know for a fact I'm always up late at night. That's a, that's a word right there. All right, so we on the way to class. It's like 10, 12, 21. building so you know I ain't tell y'all when I'm about to go into the building but I think I'm, nah I think but we got a quiz today so I'm about to go in here hopefully take this quiz and go ahead and get out of class a little bit early get something to eat because I ain't ate for the day yet for real and go from there how do you go through the course load of a business IT uh, student here it's a lot of time management I would have to say um it, and the most difficult part about it is you have your business courses and then you have your IT electives. And so with your IT elective, IT electives, you can choose them, but a lot of times it's like something you don't really have a choice to pick because there's only but so many. You know, being at this school is about engineering and stuff like that. All the teachers and professors are about, you know, hammering the work because that's really what they're here for because that's really what the school is here for. But you know, I just try to manage my time, honestly, just because it's been a very, a very difficult road, I'd say, you know what I'm saying? Because school for me has always been easy. Mm -hmm. Like I never had to try for school, but now it's coming to the point where I'm getting into the bulk of my classes as a junior. So I'm having to study more and talk to my advisor and spend more time in the library that I normally would never do. You know what I'm saying? That's just me as a person. Like I love school, but it's never been a problem. So now it's like I had to step up and make sure my school is straight and make sure I'm doing what I got to do as a business IT student so that I can get out of here. So we about to we walk up to class now. Found a nice little parking spot close to the building, you know what I'm saying? See one of my fellow Aggies, they were just about to leave, so gave me a great parking spot. So we about to go ahead and go into the class right here. Easy. Take this quiz, you know, and still manage to be on top. You've been playing drums for a long time. I have. Yeah, you've been playing drums for a long time, and you were on a national stage, and you were able to win a high school competition. Uh, can you talk about your PASIC experience? Ooh, PASIC. So, um, PASIC was probably one of the, probably the highlight of one of my experiences with drumming, uh, just because it was more of me. You know what I'm saying? It was about me doing what I had to do. But in a grand scheme of things, it was bigger than me. You know, uh, when I got there, I didn't see too many people of my complexion. I didn't see too many people doing what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? With drumming, I didn't see just, it was a lot of things I didn't see from where I'm used to being from. Like I'm used to being here where drum, like doing tosses is normal and and doing a lot of just entertaining things is normal. 
And I would say out there, their source of entertainment is strictly about the quality of your playing. You know, and so going to PASIC was really an eye-opening experience to the world of drums outside of North Carolina. And to win was a whole different ball game for me, honestly, because I never expected to win. I just went out there expecting to put on from where I'm from. You know, that's always kind of my outlook on things, just making sure that people around me know that, okay, North Carolina has some players. North Carolina has some talent, you know, and so going to PASIC, I was really just able to open up my mind a lot about drumming and different types of percussion and walking around, seeing people I always wanted to see, like Scott Johnson, you know, just going to the different booths and playing on everybody's stuff, just being loud. I, you know, I was just excited. I was in high school, but it was just a beautiful experience, you know. Um, it was very humbling as well. The 16-hour drive was beautiful too, but, you know, it was, it was fun. Okay, so it's like. Yeah, so now I got my food. I'm actually about to go. About to go see my boys at the Cold Steel House. I'll probably make some more stops before practice starts. And go from there, and I'll be in practice for the rest of the day. So, the way my day typically works, it's like I wake up, depending on the time that I go to sleep. Wake up, hopefully, eight to ten something. Based off that, I'm starting my day. But that being, I gotta go have a lesson, or that being, I gotta go to class, or that being, I gotta go do something here, because I still do have family here. So, sometimes that calls for obligations, or sometimes I may have to go do something else, you know? Um, so, Right now, I'm just about to go take some relaxing time, and I'll see y'all when we get there. Coming in during the COVID year, what was your freshman experience like? So my freshman experience was very unique, I would say, but it wasn't something I would ever take back. Um, I feel like a lot of people come into the school like, oh, I want to go party, I want to be lit, you know, I want to be out with everybody. You know, for me, that's not really my character, per se. You know, I'm a kind of very in-house person. I do a lot of things by myself because I was a only child growing up, you know, so one with school, it was easier because I never had to go to class because there wasn't any in-person class. It was just online work. And that's how I do a lot of work anyways. It's still how I have most of my classes because that's what I'm used to. And then band wise, it, it was kind of a in the middle point for me because I really would have loved to do like a freshman band camp, this, that, you know what I'm saying? So I could get that real experience. But it kind of taught me how to, it taught me that you didn't need to spend all that time in order to get the result that you want to get. You just got to spend your time wisely, you know? And I feel like that COVID year, we were actually a really good drum line. Like anybody in the section that marched that year tell you like, no, we would have seen somebody this year. Oh, we would have got them anytime. We would have got them every time. But it just kind of taught me like how to relax a little bit. Now I didn't have to spend that much time. And it kind of humbled me as well. Cause I stood on the end for a majority of the season. Like, and I was like, man, I'm real, one basic, and you know what I'm saying? You know, big chesting, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, nah, you know, you gotta stand on the end. You know what I'm saying? And standing on the end, kind of taught too on the end. You know, I just kind of helped out my freshman brothers when I could. You know, it was just one of those experiences, you know what I'm saying? Where I had to learn how to follow before I could lead as well. All right, we had the cold still house. I can't see that. I got a number either. What's up? Don't tell me nobody's here. And so this is tragic. They probably all went to go get a pool to taste the grill and cue car. Now I'm thinking about it. Cold Steel. As a current captain of Cold Steel, what is it like? Bring me into inside. What is it like being a leader of this group? Okay, so with Cold Steel, we have about 42 drummers. All right, go ahead. You're not gonna speak, T-Bone? Then you keep looking at it. You ain't gonna speak to it. Oh, what's up, man? How you feeling? Damn, how are you? 
headquarters. Y'all know them? Yeah. Oh, this neighbors. Hey, hey neighbors. So, we're cold still. We have about 42 drummers. And I always tell people this. My job is the equivalent of a manager or a supervisor of a team. A team of, you know what I'm saying, a corporation. Because I would feel like the band is like a corporation. You have all these different parts, these moving sections that you have to get to cooperate as one in order to get the result that you're needing. And so as a coach or captain, my job has always been to be the liaison of communication between staff and student and student to staff. And so as far as my job and managing with the group that I have, I'll, I'll first speak on the experience, part of the experience I had last year. I was a section leader, you know what I'm saying, but I was over the snares and, you know, that's typically the drum that kind of holds a lot of weight in the section. So I learned a lot of things about how to be less of a, a, a dictator, you know, because it was people over me. I had to let people do what they wanted to do and learn. And so this year I've taken more of an approach to be like, well, I'm your captain, yes, but I'm also your peer and your friend. You know, so I have learned to with the older heads, the people like that are older than me, I've learned to have those relationships with them so that they trust me. Like, that's, trust is a huge thing as a captain. And I feel like that's a lot of steps that people skip. Like, trust is definitely earned. It ain't, it's not given, especially in cold steel. Just like you're respecting your title and your time. You have to put in your time, and people have to know that you're willing to do whatever it takes in order for them to be successful. Because for me, is people always think, oh, it's a reflection of you. Yes, but it's a reflection of cold steel, and cold steel is a brand. You know, like Cole still at the point right now is at like 70, 70K on Instagram. That's a brand. Like we're an entity on campus, one of the largest entities on campus. So my job has always been to not only maintain, but enhance the image and the standards of the drum line constantly. And the section knows that. And they know that I'm one of those guys that's never going to accept anything less than their best. Every time that we go out on the field, small performance, community performance, it doesn't matter because... I'm going to always try to give them my best as well. I'm going to always try to protect them and make sure that I'll always bite the bullet before it even gets to them every time. Hey, so about 5% left pretty much before I got to be at practice on the, on the GoPro. So basically, I'm about to go to the store real quick, get some things, and I'm going to go home. I'm pretty much make hoodies and chill around until it's time to go to practice, you know? Like a super super busy college student like all the time during the week but when it's performance and active time like for me i'm definitely so busy cold steel it's like you either love it or you hate it mm -hmm. right and as of late people have made a lot of comments about you know events and stuff like that but people are starting to even make comments like on your playing and technique and things like that like how you can play mm -hmm. how do you handle that i don't that's that's just talk you know what i'm saying like if people want to ever know what I can do, you could just look my name up. That's the difference. But the people that are talking, can, you can't really look their names up. You won't find anything. You know, it's just like a superstar to their fans, you know? Because at the end of the day, you, you have to watch me in order to talk about me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have, to, you have to really know what I do in order for you to say, oh, you need to do this, you need to fix this. But it's like, hey, man, I've been drumming for a long time. Like, obviously... This is me having fun. This is not me being, oh, I'm about to go win PASIC or I'm about to go back. Like my training for a war and my training for just a party or a good time is two different types. You know, so when performing, I have a very different style of play than when I'm just on a drum, posting a little video on the Cold Steel page when Harvey come up and say, hey, record this real quick, play something. Like I'm just joking around, that's just my fun time. So. I understand that they may not understand that because they weren't there, so they don't know. But I would just say to like people who talk about me or whatever, like keep my name in your mouth. I love that. I, it's, it's nothing that bothers me. Like hate or love, it's all respect for me. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't bother me at all just because I know what I'm capable of. I know what I was put here to do, and I know that the band understands who I am. I know that the staff understands who I am. I know that Dr. Ruff knows who I am. So there's no need for me to bicker or go back and forth with people in comments or talk about me as a, as a musician or whatever, because I know that right now as a captain, it's bigger than playing to me. It's about being a leader and building the next leader and building something that is true to the test of time. You joined the D9 organization last year, member of Omega Sci-Fi. Won't we'll hold it against you, you know, people make mistakes. Never that. Goofy. How was it? 
literally, how was it going through the spring schedule, knowing we had performances and things like that every weekend, and going through your process at the same time? I would say it was probably one of the most humbling experiences for me, just because I always had to play a double card. You know, I had to be here as a leader here, because during the springtime is really when I took on a lot of those captain roles mm -hmm. uh, to just put me in, in the position for the fall time. And so it was like I had to put, I had to be able to separate the two parts of my brain. Like one part when I'm here, I got to be here for everybody else. I got to lead. I got to come up with ideas. I got to read my music. I got to know my music. And then I got to, you know what I'm saying, go do whatever I got to do. You see what I'm saying? As far as the bro world goes and make sure that everything over there is good as well. Um, because I, I've noticed in my life that everywhere I go, it seems that leadership follows me. You see what I'm saying? Or just that natural leadership character is in me at this point. So for me, it was really just learning how to just time. It's all about time management. I'm not going to lie. It's really all about time management. Like Harvey would give out music and be like, we want this learn. And in my head, I'm like, oh, OK, well, I, I, I'll try my best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll try my best just because it's like, you know, I, I got other things to do as well. You know what I'm saying? Performances, like I I'm only missed one performance since I've been here. And I didn't enjoy missing it, you see what I'm saying? But I had to miss a performance just because, I mean, we had, you know, probates coming up, you know, we want to make sure the show look good, you know, make sure that the presentation that you're giving to the world is, is nice, you know? So for me, it was just always splitting my time, making sure that my mind was stable, making sure that I was always ready for just whatever to come as far as cold steel wise or anything else. So has joining, would you say, or this is just, you know, a question, your opinion, uh, joining Omega Sci-Fi has helped you become a better leader. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I always, like, one thing I tell the freshman this year is that they couldn't have dealt with me last year. Just because, not because I wasn't a bag, I wasn't a, I was always a very, like, quick to react, but not to think last year. Like, and I felt like that's why last year was my, it was a good year for me to just be a section leader instead of a captain. Um, I would say, because now I'm more of a talkative leader. Like I'll talk to you about it first and we'll talk about it more instead of me just yelling about it. Just cause I, I feel like I've grown up and I've gotten really humble and I've gotten really understanding to people's emotions and their feelings, you know? And so now for me, it's about just understanding those who are around me. Cause I, I will honestly not, I wouldn't be the best leader I could be if I didn't join my organization. Like I always say that just because my organization is is one of those orgs that people have a thought about it, but they truly don't know about it. Mm -hmm. They always saying, oh, the bros, they, they crazy. They, it's like, okay, that's what you believe. Yes, that's for us to have a great time. But when it's time to be a business bro, when it's time to be the bro that you signed the paperwork to be, is really about the service and the work you're doing. And so I would like everybody in the band to know that like, I'm the only bro in the band, it's only me. So I always try to put on a great face card for my fraternity because that's just what I felt like I was definitely put here to be in the band and be a great bruh for the band. See what I'm saying? So I just want those who are under me to understand that as well. So yeah, I really say my organization has changed my outlook on a lot of things, but band is definitely one of them. Coastal does it all. Like last year, something I'll never forget because I was there, <laughs> February 5th to April 30th, there was a performance or event traveling somewhere every weekend. It's not including stuff during the week. I'm talking about every weekend we're gone. This season, from August 20th until Thanksgiving, there's a performance or event every week, every weekend. It's not counting in between performances for Cold Steel. How do you go about mentally preparing for it all? I don't really have to anymore, you know? It's just something that it, I always, I tell the freshmen this every day, Cold Steel is not on me, it's in me. So it's something I will do because this is what I signed the paperwork to do and this is what I love to do. So anytime the band says we gotta go perform, I'm always ecstatic about it. And I may be like, oh man, another one so fast? No turnaround time? <laughs> not a week? Man, you know? I'm tired, man. But it's, I'm tired. It's just like, you know, this is, I kind of knew this is what it was because I was always from here, so I knew that Cold Steel was busy. I knew that they, well, not as busy as we are now, really, but I knew that Cold Steel was always a really busy drum line, you know, and I know that 
people always request the best. Why wouldn't they request the best? You see what I'm saying? So like, I mean, if they want the best people to come do the job, of course they're gonna hire us to come do it, you know, and say, hey, we want, you know, you guys to be representation for the university, you know, so I just understand that it's bigger than me. And it's really not about me preparing my mental, it's about me making sure the line is okay. You know, like they're ready for those back-to-back -back performances like that. Like on a day, like just for example, this past, you know, weekend we had a lot of, we had three performances in one day. The line was tired. You know, by the time we got to our last performance, I had to go talk to them, like make sure the line was okay. Like let them know that the day is almost over. It was just time we had to give because we have people who want to see us, university obligations, you know, things of that nature. So I would just say I'm always really ready for a performance just because I love to perform. It's something I really love to do. But also just make sure that everybody else is ready for those performances as well. your legacy to be as a member of the BGMF? Mm, okay. That's probably the hardest question you've asked me so far. Because I'm not a person that walks around thinking about like their legacy or what they're going to leave behind. Um, but I would say that I would just like people to know me for a person who was always like uplifting, you know, or like just, ah, you like that one? You like that one? Yeah. But just a person that's always uplifting or just helping people out. You know, I feel like that's something that I've taken on more and more every year. Like no matter who it is, like other orgs in the band or just whatever, I've always been some, somebody that helps. Like, or just, I'm always trying to, I'm never okay with being complacent as well. So I'm saying between me helping people and me never being complacent, I would say those two things are just two things that I want people to really remember me for in the band. Like Isaiah was the type of guy that if he seen me struggling, he would help me with it. Or if he seen me slacking, he would get me back in line. But as though if just he's just one of those guys who always pushed me for better. Because I never accept less than the best from the line. Like, even when I'm just watching them play, I'm like, nah, that, that's not it. That's not it. You, you could have did better. Mm. You know, and I'm always trying to instill different things throughout the line so that the line, so Cole still can really sustain the test of time, no matter what. You know, there's been a lot of things I've done on the back end of things as a captain. And it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been working for us. Honestly, it's been working for us just so we can keep everything consistent. So I really just like people to know me for a guy that was humble, consistent, uplifting, and, you know, just a good guy all around. You know, that's really my thing. Uplifting. Always. <laughs> <laughs>